30 things people hid from their partners according to reddit number 30 he brought me to a house party just a couple of weeks after we started dating he pointed out a lady and said he'd been dating her before me what he didn't mention was that he failed to tell her that the relationship was over no wonder she was giving me the stink eye all night I'm also 99% sure he was seeing someone else before we decided to get divorced, since he was spending all his time at the place his new girlfriend worked. Furthermore, I'm 99% sure he met someone else before they broke up several years later, based on how they met and how they started dating. There's a pattern here. The pattern is that my ex is a shitty ex relationship partner who exits a relationship, finds someone else, and only then does his partner know he's finished. Wow. I'm so sorry. A, re a response reads, A monkey swinging on tree branches. You gotta get a firm hold on the next one before you let go of the last. Oh my god. Now, when I started reading this list, I said there were 30. And then I started reading what had a number next to it that said 31. And the reason I did that was because number 30 is deleted. Okay? And don't be uh, interested in what it is. It was actually someone copy pastaing something, and that's why he deleted it. Um, but th just the fact that you probably. There were at least a couple of people who were all like, That's number 31, Kayo, not 30, boo. But for the sake of this list, it is 30. Because 30 was deleted. You see there? You see? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take the context in, bro. You thought you knew, but you didn't know. Number 29. So when I was younger, my group of friends had this tradition of messing with people who passed out. Drawing on them, stacking things on them, etc. Anyway, one night I noticed that there was a lot of people passed out, so I started bingo daubing everyone on the forehead. Bingo daubing. Is this what we call like making people look like a uh, an Indian? Let's just keep going. <laughs> so I started bingo dobbing everyone on the forehead. I guess he did something with a marker. Then I realized I was the only one awake. Not only that, but I had bingo dobbed the forehead of a girl I really liked. I didn't want her to get pissed off at me for bingo dobbing her forehead. So I concluded in my drunken stupor that I had no other choice than to bingo dob myself. This makes sense, dude. This makes sense in your drunken stupor. You 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 made the right decision. Uh, otherwise, they would know that it was you, or you would have to pretend that somebody, whoever did it, tried to implicate you by not having you be the one with the crap on your forehead. Um, but that's hardball. Your point. That'd be that amazing. That'd be a master Kyle thought process. Years went by, and it was always a mystery who bingo dobbed everyone. The girl I liked at the party had been my girlfriend for several years now, and I finally decided to come clean. She thought it was hilarious, but let me tell you, that ink they use in those bingo daubers is really hard to clean off your forehead. Okay. Somebody said, I was so confused. I thought bingo daubing is what you're calling teabagging. I was impressed you could do that to yourself. I are smart. Number 28. When I was in college, I had no money and shaggy hair, so I wandered around the dorms looking for someone who knew how to cut hair. A cute girl overheard me and said, Hey, I know how to cut hair. She gave me a haircut in the hallway and then asked if I wanted to go to Steak and Shake. I said, Sure. It's been 13 years. We're married. And she still gives me haircuts. About two years into the relationship, she confessed that she had no idea how to cut hair, but really wanted an excuse to hang out with me. She did in the hallway, 
and asked me to stake and shake because she didn't want me to look in a mirror and see the results. She's actually pretty good at it now, though. Man, that's charisma. That's charisma when a girl's just like, um, okay, I can do that, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. That's a wonderful and cute start to a relationship. How heartwarming. Number 27. It took me four years to tell my now wife that I don't, I don't like my sandwiches cut in half. She still brings it up. My uncle hit a walnut allergy from his ex-girlfriend many years ago. She found out when we had to be hospitalized after he ate some walnut brownies she made for him. He knew about the walnuts. He just wanted to be nice. This is just adorable. Is this whole list going to be adorable? Number 26, that she enjoyed sex with men who were not me. Ooh, that's not so adorable there. That dirty slut. Oh, you stupid slut. Somebody else said, at the same time, you didn't notice them joining in? She was a big woman. For you, says somebody. <laughs> Unbelievable. Number 25 says, I've been with my girlfriend for three years and she still won't tell me why she can't listen to Jimmy Eat World. The middle was probably her song that she shared with an, with an ex. Ooh. I can't judge this. My song with an ex is Fly by Sugar Ray. Of course, we were in high school and it was the 90s. What song is that again? Fly. Let me just let me just see the lyrics and see if I can get the the words in my hair. Um all around the world the statues crumble for me. Who knows how long I've loved you? Everywhere I go, people stop and they see 25 years old my my mother god rest her soul. Oh God, it's that one. All around the world, statues crumble for me. I just want to fly. Put your arms around me, baby. That song sucks. <laughs> oh, you understand me? Honest to God. Sugar Ray is the dumbest thing in the world. Number 24, my ex-girlfriend hid the fact that she was on bipolar medication before we moved in together in North Carolina. After making, um, after moving from New York, she then stopped taking her medication and then quit her job, leaving me as the sole income for the two of us. I was 23 years old and this was my first long-term relationship. We broke up a month after she quit her job and that was a very long month. Why'd she stop taking her meds? I feel so much better. Everything working out well. I must not need the meds anymore. Somebody said, this is a trap that many people with mental illnesses fall into. I don't understand why, but bipolar people are very prone to it. Bipolar people are crazy. And if you're listening to this and you're bipolar, you and I need to talk more often. Because, you know, I've learned, I've learned from my past mistakes and dealing with the wrong people. But, hey, we could still talk. You guys are ever so interesting in ways that you'll never really understand. Number 23. He was sexually abused regularly for two years as a kid. That sucks. I'm glad he told me, especially because he'd never told anyone else. Well, man, does it hurt to think about. Well, the real world is a shitty place. Someone else responds to this. My boyfriend went through the same thing. Before we got into talks of being sexually active with each other, he told me about what happened to him and that he was very self-conscious about some scars on his genitals, hence why he's still a virgin. Broke my heart into a million pieces, and I assured him we can take it as slow until he is ready. I'm slowly falling hard for this guy, and he doesn't even know it yet. Let him know, you bitch. You let him fucking know. Unless you're a man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> to each their own you butthole banging pickle licking gyrating you know ugh, flop balling <laughs> flop 
Flop Ball. That's the new game. Number 22. I don't know if she hid it or just didn't discuss it, but I didn't learn of her massive student loan debt until we were engaged. Well, now it's our debt. Together. Somebody else responds, I think people don't really discuss finances as well as they should. It's a touchy subject, especially if you have a lot of debt in the first place. Somebody else said, absolutely. Finances need to be openly discussed before moving in together and definitely before getting engaged. It's an uncomfortable but important conversation to have. Oh, yeah. Number 21. Three boxes of thin mints in the freezer. Naturally, I ate them all in about 24 hours. A box of Thin Mints. A box of Thin Mints. Oh, whoa. She had a, she had a Girl Scout cookie. She had three boxes of Girl Scout cookies in there. Hell no, baby. Had three boxes of Girl Scout cookies in there. You get get three boxes of Girl Scout cookies in there. Sorry. I apologize. I've really got a put a leash on myself here somebody responds they weren't hidden that's where you keep them in the freezer you can keep them here number 20 that she liked the person i could become not the one who i was what an interesting point if you're new to the kyle channel or maybe you don't watch my streams or haven't seen or heard me in a, anything live before especially when I used to give out uh, advice on the original Confession podcast. I've said this a million times. One thing that people don't understand about relationships is that, uh, you know, two people are always subject to change and not the type of change that you want where it's like, I'm a woman and I just wish he'd pick up after himself more and be more clean. Oh, I need him to change. I'm talking about like we are growing every day, literally and figuratively. And what that means is like, say you and I meet each other today, and we fall in love with each other who i'm going to grow into may not be who you're into and who you're going to grow into may not be who i'm into that being said imagine one of us stays the same imagine one of us stays the same and you'll always be what i'm into you know i'm still going to change okay so you may not be into who i end up you know becoming um say i was the one who stayed the same and you'd always love me um who you change into may not be what i'd be about and here's the kicker, okay? So try to stay with me here. We could fall in love with each other today and be into who each other is, but who we both grow into may not be what either of us is about at all. We both may change in ways that either both of us may not at all be interested in. And it's not through anybody's fault. It's just the way that things go. So when you compound that or ice that cake, as I like to say, with the fact that people are usually lying to a certain degree about who they are when when they encounter people that they're trying to, you know, woo or, you know, get the attention of. Um, holy shit. When you peel off that mask, bro, and it's not what the person was interested in, you've really just sabotaged yourself. You need to be yourself because we live in a world now, especially where we're so connected that we can find people who share our interests who are into who we are, etc. But if you're faking who you are, then the real you comes out on top of the fact that the real you will end up changing, you know, through no uh, endeavor of your own. Uh, this shit's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy and sad. Don't do it to yourself, man. You're great. And just because not everybody believes that you're great doesn't, you know, mean that there's something wrong with you. You don't need to be fake. You don't need to be basic. You don't need to be plastic. You don't need to pretend to be what you think another person will like. Because odds are they probably like who you really are more. And if not, they're lost. Number 19. When I'm the one that hid something from her, that I was a smoker. It got to a point where I'd hidden it that long, um that to admit it would be pretty much lying by omission and i really liked her and that's the story of how i quit smoking congratulations number 18 well after two years my ex let me know that she liked women as much as i did uh, wow 
problem turns out wife likes women not problem turns out wife likes women too it's like a sequel i'm kidding anyway uh number 17 <sighs> number 17 he could do magic tricks we were together for 13 years and one day he pulls out a deck of cards and says pick a card any card fucker got my card and everything just smooth as can be he never did it again that's cool nigga that shows that that shows that shows first of all yeah we should address the fact that he's probably he probably doesn't know how to do magic tricks he probably knows that or maybe a couple of other tricks do you know what i mean and that's what they are they're tricks motherfucker shit ain't magic but um but i respect the fact that he did he isn't pulling out corny ass shit like that to do on a crazy occasion because it would cheapen it but the fact that he did it one time you know one and done gives it the biggest flair and uh you know kind of like underlines it in a way the response is oh my god my husband, after we were married, we dated for three years, by the way, but sat and turned a restaurant napkin into an origami crane. This guy is not suave at all. Typical awkward engineer. I am completely baffled as to why he didn't try to impress me with this at the beginning. Because it's a, it's just a dumb crane, you dumb broad. <sighs> engineer here origami with bar napkins is my go-to on first dates works wonders origami bouquets as presents are also very cheap and a stronger aphrodisiac than almost anything known to a man apparently women are so weird oh oh they're so weird number 16 he can sing beautifully yeah i'm not gonna do this for half the women that i know but i can oh damn we had been together two years before I heard him actually sing. He would belt out random lyrics in the car with me in a fun, playful, not serious way all the time. The first time I heard him actually feel it, I was blown away. He has such a deep, soulful voice. Ah, oh, love him. Ah, oh, love him. Somebody said me too. I used to make girls cry singing. It's fun. Oh my god, not that noise on the freaking recording. Oh, ooh. How do people put up with me? Number 15. My friend is dating a farmer. No, they didn't meet on FarmersOnly.com. FarmersOnly.com. Ooh, yeah. No black people tonight. You see us in the field, that's how we get down. We in the field. Farmersonly.com, we in the field, nigga. If we in the field, you see the mountain in the back. We in Montana. We in Wyoming. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Anywho. Anywho. They've been dating for five months at this time, and he refuses to take her to his town to meet his family because he's had a lot of girls date him for what he owns. She waited a year and had no problems and he finally brought her to his town and his house and his family is a multi-millionaire family. They own 15 farms across the US. Their house is a fucking mansion. She was super scared to be in the relationship after that. They're still dating but she tried, she tried to buy her own things and not depend on him and his money. Well good for her, you know? But that's not how most girls will handle it. Especially if they look the way half of these hoes looking on Instagram going, Look at his booty. Look at these titties. Mm, mm, our gas flame. Our gas flame. Mm, mm, look at my body. Look at my body. Give me all the money. Look at my body. <laughs> look at my body. Look at my body. Give me all the money when you look at my body. An upcoming track on the Kyle album. A response reads, No, they didn't meet on FarmersOnly.com. What in tarnation? You're trying to tell me. That you guys are farmers and you didn't mean on FarmersOnly.com. You're trying to tell me I can't make an account on FarmersOnly.com if I don't have a, I don't have a, hold on, let me hit this. 
know what I'm talking about? You spit in the thing because it's the tobacco. One tarnation. <laughs> Somebody wrote that. Number 14, uh, that he hates sheets. Like uh, that you put on the bed, I imagine. About four years into the relationship, he proclaimed that sheets wrap around him when he sleeps, and then he refused to use them anymore. Apparently, he's always hated sheets, but never mentioned it. There's more to this story that you don't know. The fitted sheets or the flat sheets? I absolutely refuse to sleep with a flat sheet. The flat sheet? He doesn't care um, about the fitted sheet, but he rolls around a lot when he sleeps on the flat sheet with the flat sheet around him. Fuck flat sheets. They're thin crust pizzas. Like, what the fuck? Give me actual crust. Like bags of chips that are filled 1.5 of the way. Fuck you. Give me a full bag, motherfucker. I like ordering a beer and it's not a pint. God damn. Fuck. Jesus Christ. Okay, guys. Number 13. Her butthole turns into a foghorn every morning. Somebody said my wife does this. Ooh. At first, when we were dating, it kind of weirded me out, but now I don't even notice. She is also the craziest sleepwalker ever. One time I woke to her standing at the edge of the bed, tickling my feet and laughing maniacally. I was legitimately frightened of my own 110-pound wife. Somebody else responds, I was going to bed and my girlfriend woke up with a distant look in her eyes looking straight at me, said something unintelligible and asked me something in an angry tone, really looking possessed, insisted too. She's your wife's weight, and I was also tw almost twice her weight and mortified. I almost cried trying to get her to snap out of it. Someone else responds, I was laying in bed with my wife, and when she fell asleep, I went to get up and I don't know, watch TV or something. I apparently work her up partially because as I was getting out of bed, she told me, You're never gonna make it. What? They'll get you. Who? You're never gonna make it past the lemurs. <laughs> You're never gonna make it past the lemurs. <laughs> you can see them. You can't see them. They're down there. Look for their long necks. They'll get you. Oh my god. <laughs> you are never get to me. <laughs> Number 12, he, he liked to punch walls and himself when he was angry. What? How old is he? Until we married, our disagreements were always discussions, sometimes heated, sometimes angry, but never violent and always worked out to a solution in the end. It was great. Um, it was the way adults should argue. The first thing after the wedding, he puts his fist through the wall of our rented apartment. He also slammed his head down into the bathroom door. Why the change? I've been holding back my anger. But now that we're married, I know you can deal with the real me. <laughs> Up until then, he'd been way more angry and violent than I'd known about, but had hidden it during fights so I wouldn't leave. Yeah, we're not married anymore for many reasons, but one of them being that I never, ever felt safe to disagree with him after that. I'm by my hair this wall. Uh, I pull my fist through this wall. Uh. Somebody else responds, that's exactly what happened with my brother. He always had a terrible temper. But in his early 20s, he managed to get it under control. He met a great lady. They fell in love and got married. As soon as the wedding happened, he started showing her his true anger my true form one night i'd flown out to spend a few days with him he had a great time last night i was there she commented um that the salad dressing he'd made was a little on the sweet side he grabbed the plate and threw it across the room and took off what the fuck you mean my salad dressing is so sweet i made this salad dressing myself and i'm making a salad dressing i just an salad i just a salad i put it in a two-piece suit put it in a two-piece suit salad in a two-piece suit made some suit for the salad suit for the salad suit for the salad <laughs> i made a suit for the salad the salad dressing another song coming to the count <laughs> we'd be done with the list if i stopped writing reading the comments you know <laughs> he got mad over some salad dressing fuck you mean my salad dressing ain't the shit 
That'd be like if one match at the end of Overwatch, I may looked at me and was like, you know what, Kyle? You, you may have killed all the people and got the most objective kills, stood on that payload the longest, and maybe even did the most damage. I see you on fire for 90 plus percent of the match. That's Q2. I see this play of the game, but fuck you, Kyle. You suck. You suck, Kyle. Tired of you sucking. And then I'd be like, what the fuck, I may? What the fuck? Who the fuck you mean? And I'd take my plate and I'd throw it across the room. Where did the plate come from? I may said. Where did the plate come from? Number 11, my significant other didn't reveal until much later that a sizable inheritance came with the relationship. It was a wonderful surprise, especially because we were secure financially without it. Wow, I wish I had disposable flip to throw around like that. If you're a rich girl watching this video, hey, get in touch with me because I'm totally interested in who you are on a, on a personal level, okay? This isn't just about, you know what? You have to wonder. Um... Like, you think there would be, like, a rich girl? Or, like, say, like, a rich girl gets my attention. You are recording, Kyle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. At any rate, say a rich girl gets my attention. And the main thing that she's really scared and worried about is that somebody is only going to be invested in her for her money. What if I make it all about her body instead, you know, and just be like, damn, girl, some I bet somebody would want to slide a finger down a crack of that ass and smear it on a taco and eat it. You know what I'm talking about? And she'd be like, oh, my God, nobody has ever said something like that to me. You are so disgusting, Kyle. I'd be like, why don't you get disgusted on this bed with me? Disgusting to a girl, huh? I check out my origami Make a origami Pikachu for you tonight Tonight I'm just letting it sink in I can make you an origami Pikachu If you're listening to this lady And you got that money And you're not wet at the thought of Kyle making you an origami Pikachu Pokemon Pikachu Okay then hey you passed the test damn number 10 what are we doing i'm so sorry i'm not padding out this video and i never want to i never want to make it i never want you to think that i'm doing this because i want the video to be longer half the time i honestly want these to be over but not because i don't want to provide you with the distraction that you guys deserve if that's what you're looking for because i can't consider these entertaining they're just shit posts they're me reading a shit post for you and then i can't even do that well towards the end of the list because I start losing focus. Kyle, come on, come on. Number 10, not me, but my parents. My mom told me a few years ago that on their first date, they went out for pizza. My mom's favorite is ham and pineapple. And my dad says, I love pineapple on pizza. Great. Fast forward years and years of my dad eating ham and pineapple, and he finally confesses that he hates it. He actually ate shitty ass pizza for 20 years instead of just admitting that he hates it. God, he loves this girl. That's so cute. This was one of her life lessons for me when I start dating. Oh, shit. That was a life lesson for her when she started dating. That's very good for a parent to pass down. And what it means, especially if this is a girl that the mom was telling uh, the story to, is that a man will bend over backwards and lie and pretend a lot of shit for some good pussy. You see what I'm saying? And in many ways, you should consider it a flattering uh, compliment. If you are that worth it to a man for him to just lie about something so insignificant and ridiculous for so long a time, in your mind, you may be like, lying is bad. Nigga, not all lies are bad. You know, all lies are lies. Let's get that straight. You know what I mean? A lie is a lie and there's nothing you can do about it. No, no one is bigger or smaller in a way because they're all lies and they're all bad. But um there are lies that are harmless do you get what i'm saying so i guess i take i take stock in this white lie bullshit because a lie like this oh i actually love that type of pizza you know when you're just doing it to kind of keep her um happy or keep him happy in the situation sometimes it's just about keeping people happy sometimes you you got another person who's wrong i just feel like they're right just to get to the other end of the the tunnel here if that's what it's going to take to get you happy again and stop being crazy, like, hey, what's up? Somebody else responds, this is sort of adorable. 
that he would lie all the time to share a similarity. <laughs> it's kind of cute. That's what I think. I think this whole list is adorable, guys. I think the only one that wasn't adorable is when the woman was like, I'm a bang that nigga. Uh, uh, uh. I'm a bang all the people that you know. All your friends, all your niggas, they dead. Mm, mm, I'm gonna kill them. And then I'm gonna ride that pee pee, that limp ass, that pee pee. Sorry, limp pee pee. I'm gonna kill him and then ride limp pee pee. What are you talking about, Kyle? <laughs> it's just gotta be crazy to be ex accessible for me. Number nine, my girlfriend and now my wife and I had been living together for two years before I told her I watched Star Trek. Oh wow! As long as it's not Deep Space Nine, better be that that next generation. I was worried she would think I was too nerdy. Oh, what a loser. It was the early 90s. I had a VCR at my parents. The next generation. I see it on the next line. Woo! Captain's log. Anyway, at my parents' house, I would have dinner with them once a week and then watch the latest episode of The Next Generation. It all came out one week when my girlfriend and I were both over for dinner. We were getting ready to leave when my mom says, Aren't you going to watch Star Trek first? And it was all out in the open. My girlfriend immediately felt bad for me, saying she would never have judged me for watching Trek. She even watched a few episodes with me um, I had on VHS at my parents' home. She liked it and thought the stories and themes were good. Trying to ass assuage my fears further, a few months later, she surprised me with tickets for both of us to a Star Trek convention that was coming to town. So we went, and after about 30 minutes walking around the con, seeing autograph booths, vendors, and cosplayers, she leaned into me and whispered lovingly in my ear, you were right not to tell me. Nigga, the convention is the step too far. You know, you can, like, I'm sharing Star Trek with, uh, with Aime, and it's not, it's, it's great. It's a great show, but going to a convention, shh, you think you can go to any convention of anything and find people that are, are, are like, oh my God, they come out of the woodwork. I really would like, honestly, if I had money, dude, conventions are probably the only time I would leave the house and I would leave with dozens of, uh, <laughs> of gigs of, uh, dozens of cameras with gigs upon gigs of room. And it would just be me interviewing people i wish that's something that i could kickstart i wish that would be a kickstarter the kickstarter would be me walking around a convention and narrating shit and making a youtube video of that oh my god that'd be my whole channel and it, I, and i would call the series look at this motherfucker okay and it'd just be me walking around going look at this motherfucker with the with the tail hanging down and what is even happening and then i'd be like hey you and they'd look and be like me 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 and i'm like yeah yeah you come over here i gotta i gotta ask you a few questions so uh so this is what you're into yeah yeah and they're all like yep yep love uh, my little pony have since i was uh 14 years old and uh you know it's just what i'm all about so who are you is this the rarity oh no man i'm twilight sprinkles <laughs> yeah that reminds me of butter slice have you seen that pony no, I've never heard of that pony. I'll have to Google that when I go home. Butter Slice, is it? <laughs> I'll work Butter Slice into every interview, too. Number eight. I just found out that he's scared of snails and slugs after almost 13 years of marriage. It's not really that significant, is it? Somebody else said he does know that they will never catch him, right? Hilarious, guys. But if they touch him, he'll die. Dude, this is meta. This is meta because a, a while back somebody posted something and it was like, yo, a super intelligent snail is coming to get you. He knows where you are at all times. And if he touches you, you'll die. How do you get away from that snail? He's immortal, too. I think the snail is immortal, too. Actually, I think you were both immortal and the snail just knew where you were at all times. So yeah, the super intelligent. Remember, I was saying that the super intelligent portion is what's significant because if the snail was truly super intelligent, he could figure out a way not only to sort his uh, mobility problem by probably fashioning, uh, not fashioning himself, but finding a way to get some sort of jetpack or something that would just allow him to zip around. You know what I'm talking about? Super intelligent snail, ladies and gentlemen. Just imagine a snail with a jetpack zipping all over. <laughs> 
Okay, the hiccups are informing me that it's time to move on. Number seven, one of my exes waited months to tell me that her godparents that she lived with were actually her ex-boyfriend's parents. I actually didn't mind it until he moved back in. Okay. There should almost always be full disclosure, but this is a lie by omission that I can understand. Why? That is such a weird situation that it sounds like a cheap way to cheat with an ex. Somebody says that's got to be a giant shit sandwich of a situation romantically. Fuck that. Fuck that. Ugh. My girlfriend swoops. Um, number six. My girlfriend swoops her hair over her left eye. I thought it was just an emo hairstyle until I found out that she was blind in one eye. Oh my god. Somebody else says as someone who is blind in one eye, I have a prosthetic that makes it look natural. Although if you make eye contact, you may think it's a lazy eye. When do you feel how much when do you feel would be Fuck deal with it Kyle although if you make although if you make eye, eye contact you may think it's a lazy eye when do you feel would be right be the right time to inform when do you feel would be the right time to inform a partner why was that so hard something about that is not right to me when when do you feel would be the right time to inform a partner i have a prosthetic that makes it look natural although if you make eye contact um, you may think it's a lazy eye. When do you feel? This should be a period, you dumb bitch, and capitalize the, the when. Oh my god, you fucked this sentence up. The structure. Oh, I hate you. I hate you people. Because this shit does things to my brain. I try to stay ahead of myself when I read so that I can articulate things properly and like enunciate properly, more, more specifically. When do you feel? Would, fuck me. Fuck me, you bitch. Anyway, look, you have a golden opportunity here. Just make dinner for him. Oh my God, my nose, what's happening? Something that requires chopping and while you're in the other room, make a pained yelp and then scream for them to come. Then pop your eye out of place in the next to the knife. Bonus if you can squirt some ketchup around it on your face too. Come on guys. Number five. He actually bought his favorite sweatshirt from Walmart. At first, he told me Costco because he thought it made him sound a little classier. <laughs> the funny thing is that, that it sort of does. I mean, you have to be a Costco member, yeah. It shows commitment to be a part of an elite institution, as well as a responsibility to finish 10 kilograms of ruffles and 7 layer dip, not to mention perseverance with finding parking at 2 p.m. on a Saturday. A man who buys their favorite shirt from Costco is a man who can deal with my shit. What? Number four. She hadn't done her taxes in three years because it made her anxious. Turns out she was owed $7,000 from the government. Her response reads, how do you even approach that? How do you rectify it? Do you just go to a tax person and say, here's the documents needed for the past three years. Do them for me? <sighs> Somebody else says that was pretty much it. Yeah, it took about two days to sort the papers out, and then we dumped them on an accountant's desk. Fun fact, looks like the government doesn't give a shit when you're late with your taxes if they're the ones owing you money. Huh. Number three, his eldest daughter. I learned about her three months into our relationship. I had known about his younger daughter, different mothers, from the start. He was very open about that. However, he didn't. Well, however, he didn't know how to tell me about his eldest because it was going to be a difficult conversation. The mother of his eldest had taken off with her years ago, and he had no idea how to find her. Within a year of our dating, we found her. It was very rough at first because she had been brought up being told that her father didn't care about her typical parent parental alienation with the next five years her father within the next five years her father and i got married 
and she opted to live with us. Now she is an adult living her life on her terms, and we are incredibly proud of her. That's cute. What a feel-good story of the century. Number two, he really didn't hide it. Okay. But I never knew the story of how his first wife passed away until we were engaged. I only knew that she had CF. Cystic fibrosis. Uh, cystic fibrosis buildup in the lungs. Persistent infectious infections, lung infections. Yes, probably mucus buildup in the lungs. And um, that's what the woman had. And that she died too soon. I didn't know um, that he came home from work, found her passed out and blue, and rushed her to the hospital himself, where she later died. He told me about it one evening when we were sitting in front of the Christmas tree. The whole story came pouring out of him, and I just hugged him and listened. His mother died six months after his first wife passed away, and to hear him tell it nearly broke him. It nearly broke him. I think it healed his heart a little bit to talk about it, and I know that it made me love him even more somehow. I'm just grateful that he was willing to open up his heart to love again. <laughs> Takes a real man, I guess, to, to trust people to do that kind of shit, because guess who's not doing this again? Opening up their heart to love people. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And if I hear you even insinuating the possibility of it happen, I will travel back in time. I will invite your parents to take you to a movie theater. And then in the alley, I will kill both of your parents, son. Will you become Batman? Or will you become Fagman? Leaping into my butthole, Batman. Is he is an awesome man and the best thing that has ever happened to me. Good for you. Everybody's happy. It works out. Somebody responds, We just had my wife's funeral yesterday. My wife. Your story made me feel much more confident about the future. Thank you for sharing. I'm sorry for your loss, Queen Dare Bear says. Queen Dare Bear. You think Queen Dare Bear does any, uh, like, nudes? Let's see. Queen Dare Bear's got 42,000 comment karma. What do you think her top comment is? Is this rude? We shouldn't be getting into people's shit. Well, even if she did, we couldn't look at it because it's a video. So you think she's got like a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like Gone Wild posts? Um, No, she just writes a lot and asks Reddit. You stupid hoe. Go live your life. What the fuck are you doing? Why is she talking about cystic fibrosis? Everybody out here talking about cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis. Sorry. Oh, God. That's not cool. Number one, Kyle. This is not cool. Maybe I... Man, I got to get back into trying to do a lot of these more often. Number one, my now husband acted like he knew how to grill steaks and just casually grab steaks and asked me how I liked them. And then made perfect steaks. Then continued making perfect steaks for months. But he was pretending? Then years. And I just learned a month or so that the first time he made a steak for me was the first time he'd made steaks in his life. He just studied up intensely because he felt that I would be impressed by him making a good steak. I thought he had been making steaks for years to throw down a perfect steak like it was no big thing. But it turned out he did a ton of research and was sweating bullets trying to get it right. He's the best. That's cute. What a heartwarming story. Wow, this wasn't gilded, but a comment that somebody else wrote apparently upstaged it. A response reads, kind of relevant story. I brought a girl over for dinner um, and cooked a steak that had been in my fridge for like four days. It was about to turn, but it was fine. I worked in a meat shop and it was cut fresh when I got it, but I was kind of worried. The steak turned out fine and she loved it. Nothing happened that night. The next morning I drive her to work and I had to stop to let her throw up twice. I felt horrible. Turns out she was pregnant with someone else's kid. 
Last steak she'd ever got from me. Yeah, buddy. Waka waka. <laughs> I love the story. What a twist. <laughs> what a fucking great. I wish they all had like this, you know? This is good. This, this is good, and it gets me. Classic Shamalama Ding Dong. You know? That's good. This is good. I don't usually get to join in on the joke. Uh, that they make because they're it's usually basic as fuck, but um, there's that Here's what I'm going to try my best to do is record myself another fucking list right now The real question is whether or not I should just upload it right now today as well or if I should uh Schedule it to come out tomorrow, you know, well guys look impeach Trump apparently is a is a big reddit That's being made right now. Wow people want him impeached Oh no why can't I just make a subreddit and get a whole bunch of followers? Jeez. You know? Then float my own stuff to the... I'd, I'd sticky my own videos at the top of the page. And people would get mad. What the fuck is this? You see this Battlefield game? I own this game. I own this game, but I'll never play it this well. I don't know what the hell's going on. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know what the hell's going on in Battlefield 1, I'll tell you that. So? Girlfriend showed me this asking what the hell just happened, and I told her I have no idea. What's going on here? We got a Zadia. Yeah, you know, my computer's really loading this fast. Ooh, I got that connection, baby. Well, I got that real fast connection, baby. It's like the 90s. Imagine trying to load a GIF in the 90s. Half of y'all weren't alive in the 90s. Little ass keys watching these videos. Tune in next week to see what happens in this Overwatch GIF. Guys, I love you to death. We're going to figure out, um... I'm going to figure out recording another video, hopefully. So let me do that now. And I will talk to you guys soon. Stay frosty. I don't say that. But you know. Take it easy.